gentlemen. Wonderful time. Wonderful weather all around. And I'm going to talk to you today about Pakistan. Pakistan, as you all know, is India's neighbor. But a lot of important developments are taking place there now. Let's look at the first of them. What is it? Nawaz Sharif, who had been sentenced for 10 years jail on charge of corruption, has now come back to Pakistan. That's a surprise. Because he was a man who was in self-imposed exile in London, sitting there. And uh, the reason was very simple. He didn't want to go to jail. But then, you know, the powers that be, I think some foreign powers, I can't name them here, as well as some forces in Pakistan itself, was very keen to neutralize the army, which didn't want him. And finally, he has landed in Lahore. Yesterday, I heard his speech. Both Damdar speech, thi. he spoke very well and played to the sentiments of the crowd. And during the speech, his daughter, who was behind, standing behind him, handed him the flag of the Hamas and the PLO. And uh, he was holding it and taking a jingoistic approach. Well, that's all part of the game. But the fact remains that Sharif has finally come back home. And why has he come back? And what is the background behind it? That is what we are going to examine. But before I say anything further, let's remember that he has been Prime Minister of Pakistan three times. And all the times he has been thrown out. The first time he was thrown out by the President Ishak. Uh, and he had to relinquish his post. Second time he was overthrown in a military coup by General Musharraf. He was put in jail and probably will spend his entire life in jail or maybe even hanged like Bhutto. But then uh, there was some intervention from Saudi Arabia and he, the deal was worked out and he was given 10 years in exile. So he came back after 10 years. At that time Musharraf had been overthrown and he once more won a landslide victory in the event of Prime Minister. But this third time also he was unlucky. He couldn't complete his term because the army didn't like him and uh, they wanted him out. So I don't know if they were framed some charges, whether they were trumped up or true or false. I mean, I got no comment about it. But the fact remains that he was in 10 years in jail and he was, the situation was very bad. His flattered count had gone down and then the Supreme Court gave him some bail to go for medical treatment and didn't come back. Now, I think the army has kept quiet and he's back. Now, what is it for Pakistan? Do you think Nawaz Sharif will be able to take the Pakistan ship out of the choppy waters? Because now the situation in Pakistan is so bad that even if God came there, nothing could be done. And the biggest problem which Pakistan is going to face is that their benefactor, that is China, is in deep economic trouble. Now that's a point which we must bear in mind. Their Belt and Road Initiative is a flop. And they have pumped in about $60 billion into Pakistan. They're getting nothing out of it. And Pakistan is sliding into debt, the like of which it has never seen. And now it's a, almost running around the country with a begging bowl. And the reason, of course, we know is that the Pakistanis have been maintaining a inordinately large army which has been just sitting there like a fat hen and done nothing except uh, using up the natural budgets. Anyway, now Sharif is back and probably there is an election due in the month of January. And uh, I first of all, I think Sharif has uh, gambled badly. It's a gamble. And I do not know how he can think that he'll be able to win the election in January and then uh, be friends with the army and continue for his full term. I think it's something preposterous. It's not going to happen that way. Sharif is going to be overthrown a fourth time. And maybe the old saying, a cat has nine lives, 
mean I turn out to be true this time? Because there are forces in the Pakistan army who do not want this man there. They feel he's suspect, he's a corrupt man, and he has some secret deals with India or something like that. But the Western powers, including China, are putting their eggs in Nawaz Sharif's basket, thinking that he will be able to uh, carry out their agenda. And what is their agenda? Their agenda is world domination. And Sharif will be more than eager to help them. But then, what is the precedent which has been set in Pakistan? A man who is accused of corruption, sentenced to 10 years, finally comes back and he's given bail and probably the charges are not going to be pressed and uh, he may become the Prime Minister of Pakistan. So that means all these criminal trials in Pakistan are a farce. Well, the Pakistanis, by their own actions, have themselves brought this on them. Nobody else has done it. They were the ones who tried Sharif and others, gave him 10 years jail, even his daughter got 7 years jail or something like that. And now he uh, might end up being the Prime Minister. But in Pakistan, as we all know, it is the land of Hades. Hades, as you know, is the lord of hell. And I'm afraid Pakistan is under that shadow. And I do not see how Nawaz Sharif will be able to survive in this macabre atmosphere more akin to the court scenes created by Shakespeare in his favorite play, Macbeth. Well, gentlemen, that is the situation in Pakistan at the moment. Economically, they are bankrupt. The army is clueless. There is a problem on in the northeast, northwest frontier, where there is a Islamic revolution taking place under the Tariq Taliban Pakistan. And then the Durand line is not being recognized by Afghanistan as the national border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. And of course, Sindh and Baluchistan are very, very restive. There is a instruction on in Baluchistan by the Baluch National Army. So you name it, Pakistan is in knee deep in trouble. And to top it, their foreign exchange reserves are almost zero. They don't have the money to pay back the debts which they have taken. And all this, I wonder how Sharif is going to solve it. One method which the Western powers could be forcing him to do is to have a detente with India. Now that is a very, very critical point. Because a deep-rated plan, as I have told you so many times, that the Western powers, including uh, China, are very keen that Mr. Modi should be out as the Prime Minister of India. They don't want him as Prime Minister of India. Because he's a nationalist, he's a strong man, and he's got his priorities absolutely which are averse to what the, the Western world wants. He's already put Canada in place, which the West has not liked it. And so they would like to see Modi out. Now, Nawaz Sharif is the man who's probably going to facilitate it. And in thinking that he has a detent with India, and uh, Modi will fall into the trap, and that will anger the majority of the Hindu community, and the vote bank, the solid Hindu vote bank of Modi will break and he could lose the election. I don't know whether any of the opposition parties are in league and know about this plan. Probably they have an inkling and they are very cock that Modi uses because their one point agenda is let anybody come other than Modi. And you can hear Mr. Kejriwal, who is very shortly going to go to jail himself for corruption charges, shouting from the rooftop that it is the most patriotic duty of the Indian masses to overthrow or vote out Narendra Modi. And you can just imagine uh, the shallowness of his mind that he can think only on these lines. I think it would be a fitting tribute to everybody and to him in particular if he's put in the jail. 
because here's a man whose uh, two lieutenants are already in jail in multiple scandals of the liquor and to say that uh, Kejriwal was wearing a raincoat and nothing happened to him and only the others were taking the money he was doing nothing now he makes his three pockets like that so that is at least Mr. Kejriwal will have to answer for his sins and well if the courts are there if he's uh, innocent he will be acquitted but he's desperate to see that then the Modi doesn't come back to power. And the same thing goes with Rahul Gandhi. He's also facing criminal charges in the National Herald case. And, uh, you know, he's been sentenced two years jail for making allegations against a particular community of Gujaratis. And was pulled up for it. He refused to apologize. He's got two years jail. So, gentlemen, this is there and none of the opposition leaders there, starting with Nitesh Kumar or the other leaders all around KCR. KCR is going to use his Bradford in any case this time. And then we have uh, Shad Pawar, Uddhav Thakre. I think they are all desperate people who just don't know which way the wind is blowing. Each of them feels he's a better leader than the other man. And uh, all of them hoping that we will overthrow Modi, but it's not likely to happen. Despite all the help, all the machinations being worked out by the Western powers and even China, it's not going to happen. And far as Pakistan is concerned, I think Nawaz Sharif is coming to Pakistan more like a storm in a teacup. I don't think he'll be effective. He doesn't have the charisma now. He's much older. His wife is no longer with him. And he is in serious problems. And I do not know how the judiciary in Pakistan is going to justify that a man who has been sentenced to 10 years in jail on corruption charges should tomorrow become the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Gentlemen, historically, Pakistan is at the crossroads. As I told you, its economy has floundered and there is widespread unrest. Even some people in the so-called Azad Kashmir, the Pakistan of White Kashmir, are looking at the progress made by the Indian Kashmir and would like to join up with them in India. So I said to wait and see what happens. And in the meantime, when Mr. Narendra Modi has to be on guard against the machinations of the Western powers, and uh, China is also sitting in the background, but China is on a weak wicket. Its economy is badly damaged. I don't think they're going to be able to sustain all the activities which they've taken all over the world. Well, gentlemen, uh, I don't think I have anything further to say. Pakistan, of course, uh, has voiced the support of the Palestinian people. They've been doing it for the last many decades, but the net result is, has been a big zero so far. They haven't done anything, they haven't done anything there. I don't think they'll be able to do anything even now. Well, gentlemen, uh, the situation is very exciting. Let's see what happens in the future. I will say Jai Hind, goodbye and God bless. Take care. In the meanwhile, I look forward to all of you subscribing more and more to my channel and sharing with your friends and tick marks the like. God bless. And what do I say? Till we meet again.